We thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you, it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We'll start off at the King James and then go to the NLT. Now, uh, what we're going to talk about today is, is extremely radical, so I need you to kind of like uh, make sure you're okay. We're going to talk about the, the uh, gift of righteousness versus the curse of sin. So what does that mean? Well. I don't even know if you've heard this ever taught in church, but it's like we ignore it and we kind of go over it and everybody's thinking about it, but we're not addressing it. So I'm going to talk about sinning after you've been born again. We always talk about sin, you know, back in the day when you were a sinner, as if you got born again and you stopped. Mighty quiet in here, isn't it? <laughs> so we're going to address the elephant that's been in, in church for years. What's the deal with sinning after you get born again? Does that happen? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, Am I going to be giving you a license and an okay to sin? No. I just think we need to get really honest. And right now in my life, I don't have time to be a religious preacher being concerned about being validated by all of my peers. So, world changes nation, whether you're here in the dome or online, let's rock and roll with this thing. Amen? Let's rock and roll with this. Now, I, uh, so every scripture is, is so very important to me, and I want to start off with, uh, with uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19 in the King James and then in the New Living Translation. All right, he says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, all right, you got born again, and when you got born again, you're, you're, you're technically in Christ, okay? Okay. Uh, if he's in Christ, he says he's a new creature. The old things have passed away, and behold, all things are become new. So the day you got in Christ, your old sinful man passed away. Just like somebody, when they die, you hear the term, they passed. Well, you're, that, that, that old nature you used to have before you got born again passed, Okay. Is there a little rat or something up in the speakers or something like that? <laughs> Therefore, and it might be my, my is, it, is it me? Let's see. Technician, come check me out so I won't, I won't interrupt myself no more. Make sure I'm all right. Because once I get shucking and, 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 and going, it'll be too anointed for you to check me out. You'll fall all out on the floor. And <laughs> people wondering what's wrong with you. Is this man drunk or what, you know? We good? Okay, thank you. All right, so you get born again, that old sinful man passed, and by the grace of God, you now have a new creation that is just like God and flawless and perfect and cannot sin. All right, now, therefore, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature, old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. Next verse. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled, brought you back to God, reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19, now watch this. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Now, now, now watch this. Not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now, look at this in the NLT, not imputing their trespasses unto them. 
Um, if, if you can, guys, do you have the message translation of verse 17, verse, verse uh, 17 through 19? If you do, thank you. Because of this decision, we don't evaluate people by what they have or, have or how they look. We looked at the Messiah that way once and got it all wrong, as you know. <laughs> we certainly don't look at him that way anymore. Now we look inside, and what we see is that anyone united with Messiah gets a fresh start, is created new. The old life is gone, a new life emerges. Look at it. All this comes from the God who settled the relationship between us and him, and then called us to settle our relationship with each other. God put the world square with himself, through the Messiah, giving the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sins. God has given us the task of telling everyone what he is doing. We're Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. Now, go back to the NLT, 2 Corinthians 5, 16. Somebody says, you really stuck on this one? Yeah, I got to get this first one right. The NLT, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, the new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ, and God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. He is no longer counting your sins against you. He is no longer holding your sins against you. So everybody who think, well, I want God to use me, but then you think in your past, oh, well, you know, I did this, this, this. He's not counting that against you. Well, I asked God to heal me, but I'm not healed. Oh, it must be that. No, he's not counting that against you. Well, I prayed, but I don't have an answer to my, to my prayer. It, maybe it was this, no, he's not counting your sin against you. So, in other words, you're not going to be able to use your sin as an excuse for why certain things are not happening in your life. It may be because you're self-righteous, or it may be because you depend more on you than God but it is not because of your sin, because he doesn't hold your sin against you. That's hard in a religious church saying something like that. But when Jesus went in these villages, and the Bible says that he couldn't heal none of them, and somebody said, it was because of sin, it was because of sin, it was because of sin. They said, no, it wasn't because of sin. It was because of self-righteousness. They had more trust in themselves than they had in Jesus. Now, follow me very carefully now as we walk through this. And you see the reason why I wanted to start off with that. All people who are born again, everybody that's born again is 100% righteous. How many of you are born again in here this morning? Whoa, you are 100%, not 99 and a half. You, <laughs> you are 100% righteous. Now, the issue with this is, is I've got to get you to have confidence in that truth. So, can we lose our righteousness as easily as we received it? If we commit a sin after being born again? If we commit a sin after being born again, can we lose our righteousness as easily as we received it? Or maybe... We are still righteous, but no longer 100 percent. Maybe we're now 89 percent, maybe 75 percent. And we need to cleanse ourselves from all unrighteousness. For some, it's hard to believe that a person who committed a sin could still be righteous. There are some who are listening to me now as I'm asking these questions. It's so hard for you to believe that a person who committed a sin can still be righteous. Committing a sin doesn't make you unrighteous again. And this is stuff that we've always thought, but now I'm just saying it. Committing a sin 
doesn't make you unrighteous again. <laughs> your, your, your tradition is freaking out. <laughs> but stay here with me. Now, now let's examine all this stuff I just said. Let's take it through the test. How do we become righteous? By faith in. So the day you decided to believe in Jesus, heaven says you're righteous. So are we then going to lose our righteousness by our works or our lifestyle? See, if we think this way, then we still have the mindset of self-righteousness. Self-righteousness is driving that. Self-righteousness is saying, wait, 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 but, but I got to do this in order to be righteous, and if I do that, then I'm going to undo my righteousness. See, you're putting it all on you. It, it, you're you're self-righteous centered, and so that's why it's, it's kind of difficult for you to just wholeheartedly take in what I'm saying because self-righteousness has reigned in your life and in your religion. And you've been trained in self-righteousness. You come to church and you're trained in self-righteousness. You're told if you do A, B, C, then you might get X, Y, Z. And you're told if you don't do A, B, C, you won't get X, Y, Z. And you're told if you do, you know, uh, 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 J, W, E, then, you know, that's going to mess up A, B, C. And we try to treat this thing like a, like a mathematical equation, and it's not. Follow me now. I, let, me, let me say this now. I, I need to say this right now. I am not trying to give a license to sin or to defend sin. That's not what I'm doing. I'm not giving a license to sin or defend sin. I'm trying to get you to understand what we're saying, and then all this stuff will work. It, 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 I'm trying to put everything in its proper place. The objective of grace is always to achieve holiness. The objective of that new creation that you got when you got born again, that new creation, it's his job is to move you towards a sinless life. The new creation wants you to do right. The new creation doesn't want you to sin. The new creation wants you to do right. However, that's a process because your soul has been programmed by the old man. And the old man, when he passed away, left behind the sin software. So the flesh and the sin software is still in your thinking. And even though you receive the new creation in its perfection, you still got the same software. And so without renewing your mind, you got the new creation screaming, trying to get you to change your mind. And so we have to be renewed in the spirit of our mind so that our mind being renewed with the Word will line up with the new creation. And when the new creation now begins to dominate and then your soul and your mind and your thinking lines up with the new creation, then your body will just fall in line. Why is it that you got saved one day and cussed to somebody out the next day? Because you got saved for real, but you still had that software working. You, 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 you notice sometimes your telephone sends you a text and says, it's time for an a update? See, when you get born again, it's time for an update. You got to update the software. Some of us try to live the Christian life without doing the update. And have you noticed when you don't update after a while, the phone start tripping out. It start doing things. It start cutting off. It start, it start doing all kinds of stuff because it needs an update. Glory to God. And that's why you can be born again and you're still tripping out because you haven't received the update. On our phones, the update can take a matter of five or ten minutes or so. But in, in, in this life, in this body, we, we are continually being updated because look at how crazy the times are. You are saved. You have a new creation, but you might need an update. Ain't no might. You do. Is everybody with me so far? All right, now, to know that we have received the gift of righteousness and know that we are brand new creations is the key to getting free from the bondage of sin. Number one, I know that I have received the gift of righteousness. The day I got born again, I was made righteous. Say out loud, I have received the gift of righteousness. 
Okay. Second thing, I know that I, I have a brand new creation. I know that the old man, the old man, the old nature, somebody said, why did I sin so much? Because you, you had the nature, you had the nature to sin. When you sinned, you did all kinds of stuff because you had the nature to sin. Well, you no longer have that nature anymore. You have a new nature. And you got to believe I've received the new nature. I, see, I received the new creation, and I have the gift of righteousness. That's going to be the key to overcoming this bondage of sin by you knowing I have the gift of righteousness. I have been made right because of Jesus, and I have the new creation because of Jesus. That's where it starts right here. It starts with what you believe. Tappy said it this morning. When you believe right, you will live right. But when you believe wrong, you will live wrong. All right. Romans chapter 5, 19. Let's go there. Romans 5, 19. All right, now watch this. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. This, okay, 5, 19. For as by one man's disobedience... For as by one man's disobedience, who is this one man? Many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made. Who is the one who was obedient? Okay. Look at this in the NLT. See, all of this is based on what one guy did versus one, another guy. He says, because of one person's person disobeyed God, many became sinners because one person disobeyed God. Adam did what he did in the garden. From that point on, everybody had the nature of sin. But because one other person, Jesus, obeyed God, many will be made righteous. Now, I'm going to say this to you. Your sin nature and your new creation, you did not get those by any contribution of your own. Both you being a sinner came by what one man did. And you being righteous came by what one man did. None of those came by what you did. I right, look at verse 18. Look at verse 18, same, Romans 5, 18. Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone. Now look at this. Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone, but Christ's one act of righteousness, Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and new life for everyone. All right, so what Adam did is responsible for the condemnation in your life. For you to say that you are saved and have the new creation and you're still experiencing condemnation, no, condemnation came by what Adam did. But the righteous act that Jesus performed made us right with God, and the righteous act that Jesus performed gave us a new creation and gave us a new life. So we're putting things in the right place here, man, so we can see what's happening here. All right. So there are two kinds of people on the earth right now. Two kinds. Somebody says there's all kinds. No, no, only two kinds. And everything is going to flow. Now, I ain't talking about color. I'm talking about two kinds. <laughs> the first kind is from Adam. The second kind is from the new creation. You are either in Adam or you are in Christ. You are either in Adam or you are in Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22 in the King James. I'm going to look at three verses here. 1 Corinthians 15, 22, 45, and 47. 1 Corinthians 15, 22, 45, 47. King James. King James. Now, look at these scriptures. Listen to this line-by-line -line stuff. You know I'm going somewhere. You know I'm going to take you somewhere. I'm trying to give you all the ingredients before we take the cake out the oven. For as in Adam, what happened in Adam? All died. Even so in Christ shall all be what? 
made alive. Look at the contrast here, verse 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a what? Living soul. The last Adam, who was Jesus, was made what? A quickening spirit. See the contrast there. You're either one or the other. 47. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. So you either still earthy or you're, you're, of, you're, 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 you're of the Lord from heaven. Only two kind of people on the earth. In Adam, in Christ. New creation, old man. Only two kind of people on the earth. Now, look at Galatians chapter 6 and 15. Galatians 6 and 15. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, <laughs> nor uncircumcision availeth anything, but a new creature. Now, you know what he was saying? He says, you're circumcising. In the, in the Old Testament, they, uh, every male had to be circumcised. He said, in order to be a, a part of that covenant. He said, in Christ, circumcision ain't going to get it. Or not being circumcised ain't going to get it. He said, but here is what you get when you get in Christ. A new creation. And you got to believe that on the inside, I have a new creation. We are either in Adam having a sinful nature or we are in Christ being the new creation. Now, those of you who are saved, I want you to say out loud, I am in Christ. I, am in Christ. I have the new creation. In our old nature, in our old self, we were sinners. Before you got the new creation, you, you had a, a, a sinful nature, you had an old self, you were sinners. But in your new nature in Christ, you have the new creation, you have the new se uh, uh, self. We are righteous because we're in Christ and we have a new creation. Now look at Romans chapter 5, verse 12 through 21 in the NLT. Romans chapter 5, Verse 12 through 21 in the NLT. All right. <laughs> when Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death. Do you understand that when God made man, man was never supposed to die? He made man immortal. He was not, man was not, Adam and Eve were not made mortal beings. They were made never to die. They were supposed to live forever. But when Adam sinned, sin entered the world, Adam's sin brought death. So death spread to everyone for everyone's sin. Have you noticed in the Old Testament, people would live in 500 years? It took a long, it took hundreds of, I'd say thousands of years to work out etern eternity from the body. <sighs> That's why Adam and Eve didn't have no uh, natural clothing. They didn't put nothing on their body until they sinned and they lost the glory. They were naked of natural clothing, but they were covered with their natural coat, which was the glory that was going to be responsible for immortality that was lost when one man sinned and death came on one man and eternity went from eternity to a thousand years to 800 and some years to 500 and some years and then, and then here's what people don't understand. The Bible says you're going to live a minimum of 70 years and more if you like, and you think that's a blessing. That's a part of the curse that occurred in the garden. 
70 years from 800 to 70? Do your math. I would love for y'all to have to put up for me for 800 years. That'd be something else. <laughs> I told you, great, 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 whatever. I lost count of the greats. Adam's sin brought death. That wasn't supposed to be a part of our existence. So death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. Now watch this. Yes, people sinned even before the law was given. People sinned even before the law was given. But it was not counted as sin. Why? Because there was not yet any law to break. You can't cause something wrong if there's not anything prohibiting it. So that's one of the reasons the law came in, to curb sin. It was getting crazy out there. They said, we got to do something. You got giants coming out here. Yeah, angels coming out here having sex with women and they producing giants and you got uh, brother killing brother and then you got them building a tower trying to reach the heaven with the tower. There's all kinds of stuff going on. So you can't call something sin without a law. So they, they've been sinning since Adam fell, but there was no law to curb sin. Still, everyone died from the time of Adam to the time of Moses. Even those who did not disobey an explicit commandment of God as Adam did. Now, Adam is a symbol of a representation of Christ who was yet to come. But there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. My goodness, 16. And the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the results of that of man's sin. For Adam's sin led to condemnation, but God's free gift leads to our being made right with God even though we are guilty of many sins. Because you see, it wasn't you. It was Adam that started this, and it was Jesus that ended it. And you keep trying to put yourself in the middle of all that. For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness for all who receive it will live in triumph. All who receive it will, all who receive it will, all who receive it. See, see, our problem is we won't receive it. We receive, we receive the law-based teaching in religion. We receive rules keeping. Some of us are more concerned about rules than we are people. You know, woman with the, with the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, they were more concerned about what rule was broken than concerned about this lady. And that's what the church has become. We're more concerned about rules and doctrine than we do people. We don't care about people no more. We care more about who keeping the rule and who ain't keeping the rule. You ain't got to clap. They'll have triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. You can't do it except through the man. 18? Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone, but Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and a new life for everyone. Oh, you got to choose. You go choose Adam, and you get condemnation for everybody who choose Adam. Choose Jesus, and he make everything right for everyone. He, he, so far, ain't no list of the stuff you got to do to qualify, except choose who you're going to choose. Verse 19, because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. But because one other person obeyed God, many will be made, 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 not, not became, but made, not you did something to make it, but made righteous. Verse 20, 
God's law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. Whoa! He said, God gave you the law so you can see how sinful you are. You didn't have nothing to break, so you didn't know how bad you were. So let's give some, give the law so you can see how sinful you are. You a mess. <laughs> and the problem with that is the church religion today still trying to give you laws, and you still looking at the law is trying to show you how sinful you are. You still looking at how sinful you are. So you've developed a sin consciousness, and that proves that you have not switched sides over here to God. Because instead of having a God consciousness, you're more conscious of sin and how big of a mess you are and, 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 and less conscious of you've been made righteous and you have a new creation. So you keep going and hearing how bad you are. You keep doing it. Honey, why don't you leave there? My grandmama went to this church. Her mama went to this church. And bless God, I'm going to this church. They were Baptists. My daddy was a Baptist. And I'm going to die a Baptist. And you're going to live all your life in bondage. Because here's one thing I know about people who keep the law. You can't go around here acting like you don't do nothing wrong. Because if you keep the law, the law was made for you to do something wrong. But as people sinned, look what happens. As they sin more and more, God's wonderful grace became more and more abundant. 21. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, just like sin did, God's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. This seems like an easy decision. This seems like an easy decision, except we done bought religion. We done bought traditional law-based, rule-keeping religion. And instead of caring and loving people out of our heart, we checking the rules. And by the way, you checking the very rules you break. Is everybody still on the bus? All right, here we go. There is a difference between sin and the sinner. We do not become a sinner again just because we commit a sin. I've never been this straightforward before. This is cool. It's liberating. I've always had to go over, go, for, go over that sentence and not quite say it. i say it again. We do not become a sinner again just because we committed a sin. What Jesus did on the cross is stronger than that. This is about our nature. Jesus dealt with the sin and the sinner. This is about our nature. Go to Romans chapter 6, verse 5, King James, verse 5 through 7. All right, I'm assuming you speak English because we're going to read some English. Are you there? You ready? For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, here's what you got to know, that our old man, look at there, old man. What, what, what happened to your old man? It was crucified with Christ. And that old man is also the body of sin. And what happened to the body of sin? It was destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Look at the sentence. He defines sin as the body of sin and the old man. 
Sin here is a noun. Person, place, a thing. Sin is a noun. This is not a verb. He didn't say your old man was crucified, the body of sin was destroyed, and, that, and now you won't be sinning no more. What he says is, you're not going to serve the old man because we, the old man is responsible for your sinning, but if the old man has been destroyed and if the old man has been crucified, then you don't have to serve the old man. Verse 7. For he that is dead is freed from, watch this, the old man. You're free from the old man. We keep looking at this as a verb, sinning, what you're doing wrong, and not the one that was responsible for sinning, the old man. You don't have an old man no more. Now that you're born again, you don't have to worry about sinning because the new creation doesn't produce sinning. It was the old man that produced sinning. And, and, and you, were, you were captured by the old man. That was your nature. Listen, a mule is a mule. You can raise him like a racehorse. You can cut his hair like a racehorse. You can talk to him like a racehorse. But as soon as you put him behind the gates, and they blow that whistle or hit the gun, that joker gonna start acting like a mule and not gonna run not one bit. He gonna be looking for something to eat because that is his nature. And so likewise, the nature of somebody who sins is the sinner, glory to God. And the sinner in you, glory to God, is no longer in you. That sinful man has been destroyed. That old man has been crucified. You don't have to serve the old man no more because he ain't there to be served no more. He has passed away. Someone said, well, what do you do with that knowledge? Well, go to verse 1. There's only one place in Romans chapter 6 where sin is used as a verb, and that's verse 15. Every time you see sin in, in Romans 6, it's a noun. It's talking about the, the man of sin, the old man. Now watch this. What shall we say then? Shall we continue? I'm, I'm going I'm to tr translate and define sin so you see what I'm saying. Shall we continue in the old man that grace may abound? You know how we read that? What should we say then? Shall we continue sinning? Shall we, con shall we, uh, shall we continue to, to do sinful acts? And what are you talking about? See, we're always dealing with the fruit instead of the very root. We're dealing with the cheaper instead of the deeper. If you hit the thing where the root is, the fruit gonna stop. Take care of the old man and the old behavior gonna eventually leave because you ain't, he ain't there no more. You got a new creation who's after God, who, who, who is perfect and holy and flawless, and eventually your belief in that new creation in you is going to eventually start training that old software, and it's going to start producing uh, holy and righteous things because you believe you have a new creation and you believe you're righteous. But some of you still think the devil <laughs> is living on the inside of you still. Listen, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in the old man that grace may abound or increase? Now watch, Paul. God forbid. Now watch this. How shall we? Paul, look at this. He says, okay, oh, wait. no, God forbid, but how are we going to do that? How shall we? How shall we who are dead and separated from the old man how shall we live any longer therein, the old man? Paul was like saying, what you're saying can't happen no more because that which was responsible for that behavior, we, we're dead to it. We are separated from it. We have a new nature now. 
old nature has passed away, new nature has come, I will not continue to allow an old nature that I have been dead to continue to hunt and rule my life. I have a new creation, glory to God, created after God and made in the image of God. And, 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 and when I start believing that I have a new creation and having confidence that I have a new creation, then when I behave in sinful behavior, I have to now credit that to my soul that has yet to be renewed. And what it should say to you is if you start acting crazy one day, what you should say is, ooh, I need to get in the Word. I need to, I need to renew my mind because that's not me. That's not my nature. I don't do that no more. I used to cuss you out in three seconds, but I got a new creation. So I need to, I need to, I need a, I need, what's that? I need a, 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 a telephone. I need, I need an update. I need to update the software. I need to update the, It's the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind is why you can be dead to the sinful man and still act in sin, action. Ooh, I'm tired. <laughs> I mean, you're trying to crack open centuries of religious beliefs. Yes. Now, let, let, me, let, me, let me get back to my point, though. Do, do, you, do you understand all that? I mean, I, I want you to read. Uh, look at verse 15, the only place where the action of sin is used as a verb. Verse 15, what then? Shall we, shall we sin? Action. That's not a noun. Now, shall we sin? Action. Okay, 48 times in the book of Romans, it's used as a noun. Only eight times in the book of Romans, it's, only eight times it's used as a verb. What then? Shall we sin, sinning action, because we're not under the law but under grace? That's the only time. The rest of the time, you have to remind yourself when you're reading this, you got to, you got to, you got to meditate and you got to say, wait a minute, that's, that's a noun. The sin man, the sin man, the sin man. He's been destroyed. I'm dead to him. I'm dead to him. I'm alive to, to the new creation. I'm alive to the new creation right now. In the same way, we couldn't become righteous by works. Could you become righteous by works? No. The Old Testament said in order to be righteous, you had to do right. In the new covenant, you're righteous because of your faith in Jesus Christ. So in the same way, that we, we couldn't become righteous by works, we don't lose our righteousness by works. We didn't become righteous by works, we don't lose it by works. You didn't become righteous by your works, you don't lose it by your works. Your works is not a factor. It wasn't a factor in you getting righteous, and it's not going to be a factor in you losing your righteousness. <laughs> it's a matter of faith in the redemptive work of Jesus. Committing a sin doesn't make you partly righteous. Unrighteous, excuse me. Committing a sin doesn't make you partly unrighteous. Committing a sin doesn't make you partly unrighteous. Now listen to this. I, I had to write this on a note card. I couldn't forget this. So we believe that we are still the new creation even if we make a mistake. But for sure, our righteousness now, now here's somebody talking, but our righteousness now has some dirty spots and it needs to be cleansed for us to be 100% righteous again. That's our attitude in church. I messed up, so my righteousness got some dirty spots so I need to be cleansed so we go on this little weird journey that we go on. We ain't talking to nobody. We ain't looking at TV no more. We, we're not doing nothing. We ain't, we ain't not going to eat for five days. We're trying to make ourselves hurt a little bit because I'm 75% I'm, I'm I'm righteous now, 75. 
75%. And I, and I don't want to get 50% righteous. I'm 75 right now. I got to stop it right now. That's crazy. For you even think that you have a God that's so wise that would even do that. Only religious men do that. The question is, is this the way it works? Now, if you say, yes, this is the way it works, then we have once again returned to the mindset of self-righteousness. You still think you bring something to the table. You still think it's something about you. <laughs> you won't let it go. You still think your self-righteousness, oh, the Lord opened that door for me because I did this, this, this. Or even the Lord closed that door because I didn't do this and this. And they both the same. You still trying to take credit for what you can't do. Self-righteousness is based on ourselves. It's based on our good works and our right lifestyle. God's righteousness is based on God himself. God's righteousness is based on God himself. <laughs> so here's the question. If you have missed the mark by doing something against God's will, did that affect the righteousness of Jesus? I, you know, did Jesus get some dirty spot and needs to be cleansed? Because if you're righteous because of Jesus, and you say you got a dirty spot, then we, Jesus got a dirty spot. Because your righteousness is not based on your spots. It's based on Jesus. And if Jesus ain't got no spot, quit acting like you got a spot. <laughs> Jesus has always and will always remain fully righteous. And this is the good news Jesus Christ himself has become our righteousness. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30 and 31 in the NLT. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 30 and 31 in the NLT. These scriptures are everywhere. God has united you with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made him, for our benefit, God made Jesus to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. <laughs> Not Creflo. Not, not Jenny, not Jenny Craig, none of not, not the name, whatever name you mentioned, it had nothing to do with it. You didn't bring nothing to the table. <laughs> is, there, is anybody here? <laughs> Some of y'all looking at me like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us be right with God. He made us pure, and he made us holy, and he freed us from sin. It is not my righteousness that makes me right, but if I receive his righteousness, I'll do right. It's not me performing holiness that makes me holy, but if I believe I'm holy, I'll behave holy. It's not me trying to be pure that makes me pure. See, religion and church says it's you doing all of that that's responsible for making you all of that. No, no. You, you doing righteous doesn't make you righteous. But you receiving righteousness will make you righteous. You receiving holiness is what's going to make you holy. You receiving purity is what's going to make you pure. You keep saying, no, it's got to be more than just receiving it. I don't receive that, brother. I don't receive that because you are so used to being self-righteous. And you, and you find security in being self-righteous. I mean, you find something out of being self-righteous. You love telling people what you done did and how you done did it and what you brought to the table. They ain't have nothing to eat until I brought that ham to the table. You love doing that. You're stuck in that. You're stuck in that. And, and, your, and, your, and your actions and your behavior, it doesn't change because you're trying to achieve what's been achieved. You might as well buy you a big cross, put it in the backyard, and have somebody nail you to the cross. 
only then to find out it's not your blood that's going to do nothing. All you're going to do is bleed out. We're not born again by your blood. We're not going to miss hell because of your blood. We're not made righteous because of your blood. We're not holy because of your blood. Your blood can't do nothing, hallelujah, but the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Satan has deceived people into thinking that what Jesus did was not enough for us. 2 Corinthians 11, 2 through 4 in the NLT. 2 Corinthians 11, 2 through 4 in the NLT. This is a trick. The whole thing has been a propaganda trick. Through fear and condemnation and shame, you come to church, you pray, you give. And what happened is people just got so tired of being in fear and condemnation and shame. When I was at the church, I got so tired, my pastor called me and said, you come to church tonight? I said, no. He said, why? I said, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired of feeling bad. I'm tired of feeling guilty. And, and, and I'm on the, I'm on the, the, the minister's platform. I'm, I'm tired of feeling, feeling guilty. I'm tired of feel, feeling shame. I, I come, every time I come, I, I have to hear about these rules. You can't do this, you can't do that. If you do that, you ain't going to do that. You got to do that. You got to pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, not Jesus' name. <laughs> and if you don't pray in Jesus' name, I'm like, God, dog, I, I, just, I'm, I don't want to come. I don't want, I don't want to come. And I seriously considered atheism because it made more sense than that stuff I was hearing. I got tired. And I was like, I thought church people were supposed to be about love. Them the meanest. <laughs> Never met nobody like them. <laughs> and I thought, if this is what it's supposed to be like, I just don't think I'm going to make it. And since I can't seem to do nothing right, then I might as well enjoy myself. I'm going to go to the party. <laughs> Stand. <laughs> but I got myself together. <laughs> really get down. I'm being honest with you. It just, it's like, what is this? And then we would celebrate Easter. And I'm like, why are we celebrating Easter? They said, Jesus died. I'm like, why? And he rose again. Okay, why? That's why. What? 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 And it kept blowing smoke in my ear. I got tired of it. And one day I woke up and I'm just, I'm done with this. A little boy, I was working at the Fulton County Parks Rec Rec Recreation. He drowned and he died. And I didn't understand that. And I went in the room and I said, Lord, this little boy ain't seen his life. Go on, take my life. Let this boy live. And he didn't do it. And I'm like, I spent three days locked up in the room because I'm trying to consider uh, becoming an atheist. And this is, something's wrong with this. Something's just not right with this stuff. I do everything they tell me to do. I fast. I pray for hours. I do everything they tell me to do. And, and I, I, don't, I don't understand. I'm broke. I'm busted disgusted. I'm ride, driving my mama's station wagon. I can't, I can't, I'm just, where is this God? And so, and it went, well, I'm going to be no preacher. I can't stand them jokers. <laughs> Showing up, eating all the chicken up, talking about, <laughs> can stand them preachers. I'm being honest with you, I was so tired, and it just, and then one day, I heard this word, will you become a student of grace? I'm like, what's that? 
See, the Bible says grace teaches you. You know another translation for that word teacher? He parents you. Grace will be your parent, which means he's patient with everything involving your transformation. And he, he parents, the grace of God parents you. And I needed a parent. Here is Paul's concern, and it's still the same today. For I am jealous for you with the jealousy of God himself. I promised you as a pure bride to be one husband, Christ. Three. But I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted. Just as Eve was deceived by the cunning ways of the serpent, you happily put up with whatever anyone tells you. Even if they preach a different Jesus than the one we preach or a different kind of spirit than the one you received or a different kind of gospel than the one you believed. And you gladly put up with it. You gladly just hear it because they have gigantic crowds, and you gladly put up with it. And Paul said that if anybody preach any of the gospel, or if any angel preach any of the gospel, then that which I preach, let him be accursed. And he said it twice. Amen. So since I've stopped, since I've been preaching this gospel of grace for 12, 13 years, I've lost all of my preacher friends. Isn't that sad? Because at least you could still love me if you disagree right, with me. Right, right. You can still have me over for a bologna sandwich if you disagree with me. <laughs> what is that? And then I learned... Grace people got to learn how to be gracious people, even when it's not fun, even when it doesn't feel good, even when it hurts, you got to be gracious. And the same things happen with, with our marriage. Some women would rather be dominated and abused by men than to understand that Jesus came to set you free from male domination. Amen. Look at the men. Hey, men, I got news for you. You ain't the boss. You're supposed to be an equal partner in the corporation that you married into. But you're scared. You're scared because you're so inferior, you have hidden behind false superiority to make you feel better about your inferiority. And now a woman's got to dumb herself down to your dumb butt because, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. She, she can't be smart. She can't be intelligent. She can't be a CEO or CEO. She can't run nothing because your butt's so dumb that you get inferior if she make more money than you make. I don't mind being my wife's boy. Make that money, girl. Bring that bag home. I don't mind. I'm going to cut my hours so I can serve her, run her some bath water, make her a cheese sandwich when she come home. What's the matter with you? I, I, I done got into the bloom. I've been blooming too much. I done got into the bloom. Go on, baby, help me. I was thinking about something when, um, <laughs> y'all hear me okay? I was thinking about the fact that when we had our children, one of the things that we thought about was that if we gave them a ring, it would make them pure. 
and that they would make a decision to live a life of abstinence. And I think the message of the church has been, is so much about what we do or what we don't do that makes us right. Because not to say that, you know, all of that was wrong, but I think I was sitting here just making notes as you were talking, purity culture in the church is what we so much bought into Purity culture in the church is what we do and thought what was going to change us in order to purify us. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It was still on the thing of what you do. What we do. To what try to rules. get it. What rule you got to keep in order to be pure. And if you don't keep this rule, then you're not pure because purity is not based on what you do or don't do. Purity is based on what Jesus has done to make you pure. That's it. That's all I was trying to say. Okay. <laughs> and we put pressure on them to try to be something that only Jesus can make, and that sums up what the last 50 years of religious church has been, trying to make you do something and accept responsibility for something that Jesus has already done and Jesus has already accepted responsibility for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? That's all saying. Okay. So if you, don't, don't fall. <laughs> so I'm, 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 almost, I'm almost through here. What are we to do if we have committed a sin? What are we to do as Christians if we have committed a sin? Go to the book of 1 John 2. 1 and 2. 1 John 2, 1 and 2. This is what we do. You're a Christian. You have a new creation. The software, which is, that's the flesh. That mind, that unrenewed mind, that's the flesh. Not so much your body as much as it is your flesh. Again, get to the root of it. The root of your body doing stuff is this unrenewed software. So what do we do? My little children, these things write out of you that you sin not. Okay, that's what he said. That's what he said. So as Christians, he's not advocating sinning because he's like, yield to the new creation in you just like you yield to the old man, the old sin man. So he says, what do you do if you, if you sin? He says, now, these things are writing to you so you sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate, someone who pleads our case. So Jesus says, I'll plead and stand before the Father on your behalf. Now, what is it that we do? Verse 2. Remember this. He is the propitiation. He is the sin offering he is the ransom that has been paid. He is the perpetuation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. If you sin, here's what you do. The ransom has been paid for me. I'm good. I got to renew my mind. That's crazy, but I'm good. You sin, the ransom's been paid for me. I'm still the righteousness of God. I'm good. You sin. I'm the righteousness of God. The sin offering has been paid for me. He didn't cover my sin. He kicked it out of socket. You know what he's saying, do? Remind yourself of who you are and Amen. what has been done for you. Amen. Do not try to undo something by something you do. Yes, yes. You are still righteous. Well, pass the dollar. I know it's in the room. I'm going to say it because I'm, I'm free. I know it's in the room. What, what, what you talking about? Once saved, always saved? Yes. 
You should always be saved unless you turn away from it. And you still ain't that deep. See, that's, 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 a, that's another one of them demon doctrines. Let me convince you that there's no way that you can get in Christ and, 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 and be all right in him for the whole time because you're basing it on what you do. When you're in Christ, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You would have to, it would be real hard, but you would have to just turn your back on God and just go crazy another way. But you, it, you, you would have to be full of revelation, full of this, all gifts, acne. You, you can't even qualify to do that. You better hope that's right. You better hope that once you in Christ, that they close the door behind and you can't get out of Christ. Let, oh, let me, let me, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, all right, check this out. So the ark that Noah was in, Kehasha, Dabashata, that's got to be God. That did. The ark represented Jesus. With all that water, I know they fell, but they were in the ark. They didn't fall out of the ark. They fell in the ark. So they were still safe. Noah and his wife might have even had an argument, but they had it in the ark. When you sin, you don't fall out of Christ. You fall in him. You fall right in his arms. You don't fall out of him. You fall in him. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You fall in him. Took me 13 years to get, this, get to this place where I can preach this bold enough because I know I might go viral today. I know. I, but I don't care. I don't got time for all that. You in the ark, baby. You in the ark. And when, and when everything, everybody fell in the ark, wasn't nobody falling out of it. Get about So what happens when you fall in a ditch? You get up. You remember when it was raining, uh, no, snowing in Georgia and that limb fell on the driveway and I went out there and, and tried to be, you know, your superman to move the limb <laughs> out of the driveway so we can drive? I forgot the, it was ice. <laughs> so behind me was a pond. And I got the thing moving and I felt like, yeah, superman, this ain't nothing move. And I grabbed this other little piece and I leaned all the way back and it snapped, pop! Uh, now, ain't no use of me just standing in the water because I'm not going to change into a fish. <laughs> so I might as well get myself out of the water. I fell in a dry man. I got out a wet man. I'm getting ready to dry my wet self off again. I'm all right. I got two more scriptures to share. Can I? Can, can I share these, these two more scriptures? They're important. If people think that their relationship with the Lord is destroyed, if you think that, if, if, if you continue to buy that, oh my God, I messed up, I sinned, my relationship with God is destroyed, then their one sin might lead to another sin, might lead to a third sin, might lead to a fourth sin. Because you think, you know, my relationship with God is destroyed. Just like when I told you when I was in college and this guy told me, you know, you know I heard what you said, you committed blasphemy, and, and, and God ain't going to be able to forgive you. And I thought, well, if I did that one sin, I thought about it, if I'm in sin, then I might as well sin. <laughs> and I'm so glad I bumped into a mature Christian before I started, but my thought was, since, I, since my relationship with Jesus is destroyed with that one sin, 
then I might as well go do another sin and a third sin and a fourth sin. And that's why this message is so important because as long as you think that whatever you did destroyed your relationship with God, you're going to be more open to the devil to just do crazy stuff because you figured you messed that up. Well, you don't understand I fell into sin and I had sex with such and so, such and so. I, I hope you ain't married and she ain't got a gun. That's all I know. You, you, you righteous, you might be dead righteous, but you're, gonna, you're righteous because sin has consequences, you know. But one of those consequences is not losing your righteousness. Sin has consequences, but one of them is not, is not losing your righteousness. You're still going to be righteous. You might be a put out the house righteous. You might be hungry righteous. You might be lights off because you ain't paying your light bill righteous, but you're still going to be righteous. As long as you stay righteous, you're going to get out of all them situations. We got to help people to remember Jesus as their righteousness so they can get back up. So they can get back up. So they can get back up. Somebody shout, get back up. Yeah. Proverbs 24, 16. Come on. Proverbs 24, 16. And then one more, and then we're done. Proverbs 24, 16. For a just man falleth seven times, and he rises up again but the wicked shall fall into his mischief. Look at the NLT on this one. So you got to rise up again. That's part of your maturity, rising up again. That's part of your maturity, rising up again. Anybody can make an excuse to stay down. Part of your maturity is rising up again. The godly may trip seven times, but they will get up again. But one disaster is enough to overflow the wicked and they get depressed, and they want to jump out of buildings, and they want to bring, blow their brain out because they don't have the certainty that they have been made right with God. And then the final scripture, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 4 through 9. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 4 through 9 in the NNLT. Let's read that. Let's close it up here. Y'all have been so patient with me. And, you know, somebody says, well, I don't know. I can't receive that. Hey, but still love me. All right, all right, so I preach one message a day. You can't receive it. All right, have I ever said anything to help you out? All right, so, so keep, keep love, love me because I, I preach one thing to help you out, okay? But because I am sure that God will, will, will he'll, he'll work with you on this. You'll be all right. He'll, he'll work with this. Now, you know I ain't giving, I ain't giving nobody no license to sin. Some of y'all going to do what you want to do anyway. But I'm, 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 I'm trying to show you that you got to know who you are so you can keep getting up. I said, you got to know who you are so you can keep getting up. We had too many Christians. They have fallen, and they ain't got up yet. They've been down for five years. COVID came. They messed up. I ain't seen them since. You got to learn how to get up. 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 Yeah, it was awful. It was bad. It hurt a lot of people. You got to learn how to get up. You got to learn how to get up. You got to learn how to get up. What, what, what motivates you to get up? I am the righteousness of God. I am the beloved of God. I'm going to get up and I'm going to be better when I get up the next time. And the devil ain't going to win, and he's not going to defeat me. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, how great thou art. Jesus, come back this afternoon if you don't mind. Somebody said, don't say that. You better hurry up and get ready. You better hurry up and get ready. I ain't married yet. You better ask God who you supposed to be marrying then. Don't be talking about me holding up Jesus because you ain't ready. You better get ready. I'm ready. I've been ready. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Telling me not. I'm praying that every day. Come now, Jesus. <laughs> and because of his glory, this last one, and because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with generous provision on moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness 
Godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fall, fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or they are blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. He said, that's the reason why you fail to develop in this way, because you forgot that you were cleansed of your sins. You forgot that you are the righteousness of God. You won't remind yourself that the price has been paid, the ransom has been paid, my sins have been forgiven. And so it's hard to develop in those things because the only alternative is you using your own self-effort to try to develop in those things. And you say to yourself, I done failed too many times. God don't want to use me. He don't want to use me. He can't want to use me. And then you start comparing yourself. You know, I wish I was like such and so, such and so. Such and so, such and so got stuff that he, he getting up from too. <laughs> he might look better today because he got up two days ago. You, you got up last night, you know. <laughs> but get up. Get up. I refuse to keep going along with this church, law-based, rule-based, religiosity that lasts for a while, and then you look after some years, those same people who were so committed, where are they? They quit. They quit, and they died wondering if they were all right with God. I ain't doing it. I know this is right. Everybody here can leave, and we go back to blue seats. I ain't never going back to law-based religion. Amen. Not as long as I'm black and living. It ain't never going to happen. And Taffy and I, we don't put pressure on our kids. We trust God. They fine. They fine. Saved, born again. Remember when they, when they, when they got born again? Ain't nothing changed. They're going to be just fine, just like yours going to be just fine. You know why? Because they keep getting up, and they keep getting up, and yours going to keep getting up, and we going to keep getting up, and I'm going to keep getting up, and mom and them going to keep getting up. How we say last week? Keep it moving. You get anything out of that this morning? Real quick, if you move quickly with me, we'll get you on out here, but if you can, hold, hold, hold a long line. Uh, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to minister this word, and now the Holy Spirit, we trust you to confirm it. We trust you to make it plain. We trust you to give revelation of it. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name. Let's give. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hands. The ushers will be more than happy to put it in your hands. That's why we got to understand how to rightly divide the word. I give because I'm so in love with him. My giving is a reflex of the love that I have for God. My giving is not some kind of game or con. It's me giving, and you've got to decide what you're going to do where that area is concerned. I'm going to give because God has been so good to tap in I that we give uh, with a cheerful heart. We give not out of necessity. We give not out of fear of a curse. We give because God has been so genuinely, awesomely amazing in our lives and that we love him. And if God blesses you, if God does something for you and, and you know, to reciprocate that back to him, that's my giving. Because he, he asked in the word. He said, give. He said, bring unto the Lord glory due to his name. Give an offering and worship him in the beauty of his holiness. My giving is my worship. And my worship cannot just be when I sing and when I pray and when I come to church and when I shout. And then 
when the test comes. Am I governed by mammon or am I governed by the love for God? I give a portion of all that he has brought into my life. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own I give to thee. What I give, <laughs> he gave to me anyway. So as you give today, and as you plant today, and as you decide to accept this challenge or stick with Adam, because that's the decision. To accept the challenge to be in Jesus or to stay in Adam. There's condemnation that comes from being in Adam, and next week we're going to talk about that condemnation. Condemned. That voice that says you're no longer fit for use. So we condemn this building. We condemn this life. That ain't God. Wow. I just imagine standing before Jesus and it, trying to explain to him why I wouldn't preach the gospel. Because people don't like the gospel. They don't like me. They don't like Paul. I thought I delivered you from, 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 from uh, being validated with people. And, and yeah, I thought you did too, Lord, but it came back. Nah. Greatest deliverance you'll ever have in your life is deliverance from people where you can finally do what God told you to do without being addicted to approval. Sure, I want a lot of people to like me. Everybody wants to be liked, but man, they dog Jesus out. I had a nerve to call Jesus a wine bibber and, and called him a, a devil plenty of times, called him Beelzebub. Think of that. But one day we're going to see him. And I want to make sure that this was not a waste of time for none of you. <laughs> when I get to heaven, I want kisses and hugs from everybody. All I'm going to do is say, I told you, Demma. I told you, Demma. And then there'll be someone that'll come up before the throne and say, but the reason why I didn't do that, Pastor Dollar never taught it. I'm going to be right behind that little chair. I'm going to stick my head out. Use a lie. And come on back over here. You missed church because it was cold. <laughs> Hold your offerings up and we'll get you out of here. <laughs> oh, my God, for the privilege of sowing into the kingdom, for the privilege of trusting you, of believing in you, of depending on you, we bring these gifts we sow them in love out of our hearts. And we thank you for what you've already done. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, you can receive the offering. As, uh, as you give, I want you to be thinking about your status as a believer. I want you to be thinking about Am I truly born again? Have I made Jesus the Lord of my life? Am I ready to check in to Holy Ghost Hotel? Am I ready to accept him as my everything? And the altar is the place of change. <laughs> the altar is the place where you come down trusting and dependent on God to say, Lord, I give you my life and things change. If you're here right now and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life and today you make the biggest and most important decision of your life, I want to pray with you. So if you're not saved and you want to be saved and be a born-again Christian, and in reality, we're, we're constantly being saved. 
But if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you want to fix that today, come on down right now. If you're here and you want to recommit yourself to God, you want to rededicate yourself to the Lord in a sense of saying that somehow I put this relationship on pause and I'm ready to mash play, you come down. If you're here and you want the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you come down. And last but not least, if God has called you to join this church, World Changes Church International, where it seems like our doctrine doesn't line up with everybody else's, you got to make that decision. I've given to you four things. An opportunity to get born again, to rededicate your life, receive the Holy Spirit, and to join this church. I pray that you will respond right now as the Spirit of God leads you to respond. Yeah. Yeah, the devil's losing you right now. He, condemnation is losing you right now. Guilt and shame, it's losing you right now. It's losing you right now. Yeah. Yeah, the devil can't even keep you. Why, why, why serve somebody? He can't even keep you. But the Bible says, God said, I'll keep you from falling and I'll present you faultless before the Almighty God with glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Yeah, I'm not going to let go of him, and he ain't going to let go of us. He won't do it. He won't do it. Honey, get ready for your whole life to change. God's going to touch every area of your life. Hopefully one day I'll be able to explain it, but I don't. God, when, when you start understanding stuff like this, and you start believing right, and he starts doing right, he... he he like literally moves into your life and starts rearranging furniture. And, and you get up one day and look in the mirror and like, what has happened to me? I don't even think like I used to think. I don't even want what I used to want. Because he's changing your desires. And I know what it feels like when, when your doctrine that you live your whole life believing is challenged, your whole life. Your whole life is challenged, and it's like, it's like, oh, God, I, I just want to believe. Like, and I, I pray my prayer. I'm like, God, I thank you that it helped me not to be deceived. And I, I will use the rest of my life preaching this gospel. Now there are little interesting things that come with it, but, you know, you, you got to put your, <laughs> you know, you're going to be the man. You're going to be a man God calls you to be. You need to take your bloomers off and put your, you need to put your big drawers on. You understand what I'm saying? You, you need to be what you, you need to be what God calls you to because if God's going to ever get something done in this earth, he not going to be able to do it with a whole bunch of people who are addicted to approval. Can he trust you? Can he use you? Can he speak to you? Can he lead you? Can he guide you? That's what this is about. And I thank God for world changers. World changers. Now, Father, I pray the blessings over these precious people that there will be such a glorious transformation in their lives from the inside out that they will stand in testimony one day and declare how the grace of God has changed their lives. And I praise you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Amen. Amen. At this time, if you'll turn this way and follow this gentleman to the prayer room, they're going to take you, minister to you, give you biblical understanding. If you just pray...
with us and you want to join our e-church, all that information is there on the screen. Ladies and gentlemen, let's stand up for our final blessing. God bless you. Thank you for being so patient with us today. And now may the spirit of grace parent you throughout this journey. May the spirit of grace teach you throughout this journey. I pray in the name of Jesus that the angels of God watch over you, that they protect you, that there will be no car wrecks, no death from sickness and disease, no life-threatening diagnosis. I call you blessed right now in Jesus' name. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the Almighty God. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And everybody said, amen. I love you guys. God bless you. Have a great day. Amen. 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 <laughs> There is nothing like being a world changer. Nothing. I tell you the truth. Nothing at all. Oh my goodness. We pray that you all enjoyed and received just the life changing word that we received. Yes. Because my goodness, God is so serious about us. Yes. He loves us some us. He loves us well, some us. He loves, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, uh, thank you, World Changers, for tuning in today. Um, be sure, of course, to not only share this message with someone that you love, mm -hmm. share it with yourself. Yes. Okay? Make sure that you're taking those notes. Make yes. sure you're getting it all in because, man, this God is so amazing. Listen uh, to it. Uh, what's that song? Over and over and over. Over and over and over. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we definitely got so much out of today's service. Um, Ayana, what? Share something that Ooh, you got because we me, we kept hitting each other. I for know that. For me, it was the the mic drop of you have to know who you are so you can keep getting up. What motivates you to keep getting up is knowing that you are the righteousness of God. Mm. So, uh, like we were saying, stand up. <laughs> stand up. Stand up. <laughs> stand up. Know who you All are. Right? You are righteous. <laughs> Type that in the chat. Say, I'm the righteousness of God. So, uh, one thing that I got out of the many was that the grace of God will not only teach you, but also parent you. Mm -hmm. And as a parent, that just, that, that it hit. hit. It, it hit, hit so different. Because um, mm -hmm. even though you know, like, he will parent mm -hmm. you, man. So, again, share this message with yourself, okay? Listen. <laughs> with yourself. Not just Sunday. I, you know, I keep telling y'all every single day you can go online yeah. listen to it over and over and over get them mp3 whatever you got to do to meditate on god's word yeah. do that y'all do yeah. that listen you you can't just sit there and just be like oh well you know i went to church on sunday i'm good now <laughs> it's a constant software yes. update okay like he said constant, constant. i told you this Listen, <laughs> thank God for our pastors, yes. our gifts. Okay, let's keep moving because uh, I'm really like in a we, place. We fool, honey. We, <laughs> we fool. fool. We fool. <laughs> so uh, for those, of, of course, as you're online, if you did not get an opportunity to give today, we want to make sure and, and extend that over to you right now. Mm -hmm. So we do have multiple ways that you can give, mm -hmm. but one of which uh, you can simply text the word world changers to leave a space and then add your amount mm -hmm. and text that to 74483. You can also call in your gifts to 866 Four seven 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 six eight three. You can mail it in to 2500 Burdett Road, College Park, Georgia, 30349, or of course online simply by um, on worldchangers.org or creflodollarministries.org. Man, I'm yeah. full. Yeah. All right, so we have a few announcements, just a few just a announcements few. to share with we, you. We got uh, a lot going on, but we a got a, a few announcements. <laughs> First up, ladies, ladies, if you're tuning in and you came to Women's Fellowship yesterday, Thank you so, so very much. We had a great time. I was there. We had a great, great time for our first kickoff of Women's Fellowship for 2024. Be sure to be in the building, in the building February 17th. That is our next Women's Fellowship. And then that leads us right into Blue. <laughs> so we got we got month to month to month back to back to back, back to back. <laughs> so Bloom, March 14th and 15th, make sure and be there. We have special guests: Pastor Taffy Dollar, Laura Pickett, Chrislyn McNear, Dr. Anita Phillips, Samira Joy, Pastor Dollar, Ty Tribbett, 
I don't know if y'all heard that add-on of Thai Tribbett, Egypt Sherrod, and so much more. So make sure and text RADICAL to 51555 so you can get your ticket today. Early bird ends today. Make sure and get your ticket. Get your girls together. Tell them, girl, did you get your ticket? <laughs> I ain't get my ticket. Listen, all right, let's, let's get this group chat together and get our ticket yeah. and our schedules together and our flights or whatever we need to do yeah. to be in the building for Bloom March 14th and 15th. Yeah, and I also heard there's a, a group rate as well. Yes. So as you get your girls, That's what I said. Get take your girls advantage together. of that group rate. Okay? So. So. Um, now, outside of that, I know the ladies are holding it down, and we, we just, sure are. you know, we love, we love them. But <laughs> <You know>. uh, fellas, <laughs> fellas, men's fellowship is actually happening this Saturday, mm -hmm. January the twentieth at eleven a.m. This Saturday, January twentieth at eleven a.m. So simply come, connect with the tribe, and we promise that you're not going to leave the same. So what we, what I want you to do is text the word men's fellowship. Text men's fellowship mm -hmm. to five one five 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 to register today. Today, uh, ladies, we know y'all blooming and all tell your fellas say hey look bro hey sir <laughs> gentlemen go ahead and register mm -hmm. so let's let's all come together this is our first event of the year as mm -hmm. well so uh shout out to all the fellas we i know y'all gonna do it and i can't working wait to on see ourselves you. from the inside yeah, out from the inside out so next up, uh, calling out to LA, Change Experience LA is almost here. So on February the 2nd, mm -hmm. um, it's gonna be our first stop of the Change Experience Tour. What we want you to do is simply text the word CHANGE2024 to 51555 to reserve your seat today. It's free, it's an experience unlike any other. So LA, I know y'all showed up last year. Let's continue to show up, show out, and tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend All right. that we coming. Yeah. All right, so back to College Park, y'all. Back to College Park. <laughs> we got a, the international city of College Park. 38th anniversary, y'all. 38 beautiful, amazing years. Help us celebrate on Sunday, February 4th at 10 a.m. So if you say, you know what, I might need to be in the building. Let me travel. Let me get there. 10 a.m., come celebrate it with us. Uh, we will have Donnie McClurkin and Fred Price Jr. will be uh, imparting into us on Sunday. So make sure and join us Sunday, February 4th, 10 a.m. We are so excited to see you there so yeah. you can come celebrate with us. Definitely. And then also, Grace Life Conference. Woo! The Grace Life Conference is almost here. Last year it was Listen. Listen. <laughs> it get better and better. And better and, and better. this year is just going to another level. This year is going to be the reunion. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do, the tickets are available right now. Um, you can save your seat right now by texting Grace Life, one word, mm -hmm. to 51555 or by visiting creflodollarministries.org. So we're going to be all here in the international city of College Park city. on July 11th through the 13th. And this will be a reunion that you won't forget. Listen. I'm excited. I'm excited. Y'all excited? I'm excited. Are y'all excited? Listen, you better be excited because this God is good. 2024, <laughs> y'all. Yeah, so that's all we have right now. We don't want to take up too much more of your time. So we want you all to have an amazing, mm -hmm. amazing, favor-filled and blessed Sunday. Get you some good eats, mm -hmm. all of that jazz, and make sure to love on somebody, hug somebody, tell them mm -hmm. you love them. Tell them that, that God is good and that you are the righteousness of God, all right? All right. So we want you all to have a great Sunday. But before you log off, mm -hmm. before you log off, hold up. Before you before, log off. Tune into this special spot. Love y'all. A room filled with brilliant minds. Women gather to share and learn. Seeds of knowledge ready to bloom. Ideas blossoming as we discern. Experts, students, leaders alike, each with their own light to shine. Break the bands of trauma in the name of Jesus that's trying to snuff out your garden. There is something you felt on the inside of you that built strength within you to give you the courage to go out and do what he has signed you to do. Could you consider cooperating with the plan? Since he has done what he has done. I'm more than a conqueror. Greater is he that's on the inside of me than he that's in the world. When you begin to call those seeds that be not as though they were, by his stripes I am healed. But you have to make up your mind, I am ready, I'm not scared. You will not have my marriage.
Rich, you will not have my mind, for we are not under the law, ladies. We are under grace. Are you ready to bloom?